What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge up. I know you guys could probably already tell it is going down just by that title alone. Definitely you'll want to see this one as we're witnessing Kamala Harris humiliating herself for the nation to see once more in her latest sit down interview, which absolutely went off the rails as Kamala Harris ducked and dodged all policy questions. I'm excited to get into it, guys. We're not straight into it. Just make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Before we even get into it, you guys, hit that like button, also hit that subscribe button for your boy. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it, folks. I just want you guys to check out the phoniness. This first clip is just the phoniness, guys. Check it out. I worked with a brother here in, in DC, Kier, who, I worked with a I worked with a brother a brother not a brother guys I worked with a brother she starts it off just so fake so phony guys I worked with a brother here in DC not a brother but a brother with an A I worked with a brother here in, in DC Kier I mean guys this is her trying to relate to the black voters I mean it just does not make sense listen to it I, I'm not sure I know when folks are going to wake up or get tired of hearing this is like an insult on folks intelligence to keep trying to fake and play in people's face to act like she's, you know, keep up this black act. And she's not. She was raised in a single house by her mother and her mother was Indian. I'm not sure where this whole, you know, come on now, y'all listen to it. Do you have people in your life who applaud your success? Mm. Do you have people in your life who you trust? Do you have people in your life who when you trip and fall, they laugh with you? Guys, look, I just want you guys to pay attention before I even get going. Look at the, like, just the body language throughout this room. First of all, Matt Barnes, this guy's not even paying attention while she's speaking. He's reading new cue cards or the next question, but she's literally talking. He's not paying one mind to what she's saying. Oh, my goodness. Do you have people in your life who, when you trip and fall, they laugh with you, and then they pick you up and push you back out there? Mm -hmm. There are people that you know who will be those people if you choose to have them. Mm -hmm. I am blessed to have an incredible family and incredible friends. My best friend from kindergarten is still one of my best Love friends. It. That's crazy. Right? <laughs> Stacey Johnson. Yeah, that's dope. I love it. We used to go to the clubs and her mm -hmm. father Seville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and the creepy laugh off. That's how you know she doesn't have much substance to follow it up with. She does that laugh to, you know, fill that space, fill that gap, the void in her mind trying to click back on and know what to say next. Guys, listen to the interviewers. Just their their uh, emotion isn't there. They're like, mm-hmm, whatever. Yep, okay. Like they can tell what she's doing too, and it just doesn't make sense. Be yourself. I think she would get a lot more, you know, support if she was just genuine about who she truly is. But it must really be that bad. I mean, I just want to show you guys. Listen to how the interviewers just they have no they have no care at all about what she's saying. Like, listen to them. Yeah, that's dope. I love it. We used to go to the clubs and her mm -hmm. father Seville. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, yep. And and so I think that's part of it. Right. Because. You do need the support to to deal with it. And especially, I mean, people who are active on social media, it's hard it's out tough. there. It's, it's tough. tough. It's and tough. I mean, you have to find things like I love to cook. Do you have? Oh, my goodness. Then she brings up. It's hard out there. It's hard out there because of your last three and a half, almost four year term where you guys sat and done nothing but let this country rot, guys. Check it out. We got TikTok asking, when are the American folks going to say they're tired of it? Listen to it. Y'all not tired yet? I mean, come on. Kamala Harris won't go on Fox News. She won't do a comprehensive interview where she has to answer follow up questions where she has to be challenged on the things that happen in this current administration, but she goes on all the smoke. So she'll go on a podcast hosted by two potheads, ex NBA players who are very low IQ. I mean, it, it, there's nothing serious about this interview, right? And then you sit here and you watch this woman try so hard to be authentic and it's so cringe. Sis, you, I've never seen somebody go so far out of their way to prove their blackness while still not proving it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You made this about your identity. We never did. Exactly. That's the point that I want to bring up where she tries to play that victim card, tries to slap it back on Donald Trump. Like, I can't believe he would dare. He would dare to question who I am, you know, my identity. When she was the one who brought this up, you know, her roots. 
and start bringing race into everything that was done in order to appeal to try to get the black vote. We didn't bring it up. You did. That's a great point he brings up. You made it about your identity. So then when people start to dig, then mm -hmm. you're going to blame the people. You came up with the stuff that you came up with and shared it with the people. You were the first Indian everything until all of a sudden now you're a black woman. Get on with it. But that's not neither here nor there. So she has talked to all the smoke. She has talked to Luke, the Cam Luke Campbell from Two Live Crew. You remember, um, um, what was that? Uh, hey, are you ready? Band in the U.S. Remember, just nasty, nasty, nasty rapper, right? One of the most degenerate rappers from my childhood. But you mm. go talk to him. You go to the Breakfast Club. You do softball interviews with CNN, MSNBC, right? You do softball interviews with a local Philadelphia affiliate. But you won't bring your behind into an environment where you are actually going to be challenged. How do I trust you as a leader? How can I trust a leader that won't go into a contested environment for the interview? Come but you now. want me to trust you with the nuclear codes. You want me to trust you with conversations with world leaders. You want me to trust you with our economy, the border, and all the other issues that are going on in this country that were exacerbated by you and Biden. But I'm supposed to just shut up and vote for you because my skin's brown and your skin is allegedly brown. That's not how exactly. that works, Sway. Yep. How are you going to say you for the people, but you ain't talking to all the people? You know who talks to all the people? Donald Trump. Donald Trump goes into contested environments. He went to the Libertarian National Convention. He went to the National Association of Black Journalists. And the craziest part about Donald Trump going to the NABJ, Kamala Harris didn't even go to the NABJ. So she's not only avoiding hostile uh, media, she's also avoiding friendly media, friendly journalists too. So I mean, right there is proving our point. Donald Trump, he will go anywhere, sit down with anyone, answer the tough questions. And if he can't answer the tough questions, he'll address it as best as possible. But I don't see this guy ducking and dodging any media, any type of media. I'm just saying it. Went to the Libertarian National Convention. He went to the National Association of Black Journalists. Mm -hmm. He'll go pretty much anywhere you ask him to. He went to Detroit and a lot of black folks didn't show up, but he still showed up. Showing and proving and talking about it are two different things. So why don't you come over to Fox News and let Harris Faulkner interview you? She did a great interview with Trump. She challenged Trump. She pissed off some of Trump's base with her interview. But that's her job. That's her assignment as a journalist, not to be Trump's fan, but to get down to the real. Exactly. And that's why I'm, I'm going to hold uh, some of these journalists, these uh, media um, personnel, just their feet to the fire on this saying they, they haven't been doing their um, their due diligence. They haven't been doing their obligation of you know, true media. It's their job to make sure they ask the question that the people want to know and also follow up on it, not be asking Kamala Harris about her favorite recipe or you know how she cooks greens. I mean, we don't care about that. We want to know her policies, her positions, um, how she's going to make America a better place for uh, American citizens and right now it's just not there. And I want you guys to check this clip out right here. Um, this is Matt Barnes and I'm gonna preface this whole clip with Matt Barnes is 44. He graduated high school in 2008. Okay, so we're gonna get straight into it. I grew it. up Italian mom, black dad, and was always very proud of my heritage until an incident I had in high school when I was 17, uh, protecting my little sister. Someone called her some names. Mm. I did what the big brother did. I ended up getting in trouble and the KKK came and vandalized, nearly burned down my high school. And I knew at that point, although I was very mm. proud to be Italian and black, that the world looked at me as a black man. So we're saying, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get this clear in my head. So in the year, 2004 through 2008 this is when matt barnes was in high school guys you're telling me he's saying that the kk he was protecting his sister from the guys that were calling his sister names and the kkk came and tried to burn down his school i, I mean guys this right here is who kamala harris will sit down and do an interview with if this doesn't show you this isn't true journalism i don't know what does like he'll lie about just the dumbest stuff so he's going to definitely allow kamala harris to lie about anything and definitely the dumbest stuff i mean like, come on it that was the first thing that you know struck a chord in my ear i'm like what did he just say no way he said that guys and although i was very mm. proud to be italian and black that the world looked at me as a black man mm. you've always been secure in your identity who yeah. you are but what do you feel or what do you think when you hear people kind of questioning just the fabric of who you are well one i don't listen to it okay. <laughs> Um, I'm really clear about who I am, and if anybody else is not, they need to go through right. their That's own their level of therapy. That's not my That's issue. Their issue, right? My mother Gaslighting. was very clear. She was raising two black girls mm -hmm. to be. 
My mother was very clear she was raised in two black girls. Your mother was an Indian. Your dad was supposed to have been what, a Jamaican, I want to say. Uh, that's still not black in my book. But Kamala Harris is over here just pointing out, underlining her lies. And she doesn't want us to address it. I mean, right there, she's saying her mom raised her. She's been saying it time in, time out. She's pointed out, guys, that she's phony as a kid. Therapy, that's not my issue. Serious, she was right. My mother was very clear. She was raising two black girls mm -hmm. to be two proud, proud black women. Mm -hmm. And that was never, it was never a question. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because over the years, um, journalists, <laughs> some, not most, will want to talk about it. And I say, okay, if you want to have this conversation, I'm prepared to have it, but sit down and get comfortable for a few hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you want to start talking about race in America, mm -hmm. you want to talk about what, the one eighth rule. A drop. You want right. You want to talk about what it means in terms of what who you are perceived to be and the impact that can have on the rest of your life, regardless of who you Absolutely. actually are in terms of your God given capacity and the rights that you have and should have. So you know, <laughs> and the rights that you have and should. She's going on whenever she does that squint face, like she's really locking in, guys. And you see her, she's really thinking about it. That means she's doing a word salad. I'm just gonna say that right. That's the tell of a word salad. I figured it out, guys. I put my finger on it. As soon as she locks in with the scrunched eyebrow and she's kind of squinting, like she's trying to see something behind her. That's it, right there. Look at her. She's doing it. Look, guys. Talk about what, the one eighth rule. A drop. You want right? You want to talk about? what it means in terms of what who you are perceived to be and the impact that can have on the rest of your life regardless of who you Absolutely. actually are in terms of your god-given capacity and the rights that you have and should have so you know i don't mess with that i think that's other people trying to figure some stuff right. out that and they need they need they got some issues they gotta yeah deal with it um, oh my goodness folks i think i finally figured it out when kamala harris does the word salad she does the great think the think like she's thinking so hard about it she thinks she's saying uh very great points or quotable moments and it's just never it's never there check it out All we're gonna end. Uh oh sorry guys check it out we're gonna end on this clip this is when kamala harris is asked about her economic plans economic policies uh, you already can you probably can imagine where this one goes check it out black business we actually just started our business in january so we're you know we've, we've grown from a show to a whole entire company what is your kind of your economic That's plan funny. moving forward for people who are living paycheck to paycheck and, yeah. and struggling for groceries and 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 rent and and homeowners so look i grew up so my i grew up so my so my sis my sister and I were raised by my mother, a single mother. I know you guys could probably tell the worst, I mean, the rest, word for word. I mean, it's the same old, and they say the same old tired playbook. But you hear her keep running this same speech, running this song. I mean, like, we're tired of hearing it at this point, Kamala. It's, we get it. We get it. Rent and, and homeowners. So, look, I grew up. So my my sister and I were raised by our mother. We lived for a long time on in an apartment on top of a, a child care center. That okay. child care center was actually owned by a woman who lived two doors down from us, Mrs. Shelton, who was, by all of our accounts and feelings, our second mother. She helped raise us. And so she was a small business owner. So I'll start with the small business and congratulations on what you, you guys have done. You. I, from a child, knew who our small business owners are, right? I mean, you're, you're business leaders, but you're also civic leaders. You take seriously your voice and how you can mentor, how you can grow, right? Communities and the sense of communities. I love our small businesses. And so a lot of my work in terms of building and growing the economy has focused on small businesses. Um, and, and my vision overall is we need to build an opportunity economy in which we increase opportunity for all, including small business owners. So a lot of my work, even in this. How, Kamala, how? Stop with this whole opportunity economy thing. Like, how are you going to provide this for the American people? It just doesn't make sense how she keeps being allowed to get up there and say this. 
blurt that out, but not back it up with the how. What are you going to do for the people? And don't say you're going to copy or, you know, take Donald Trump's plans. I, I want to hear what you can do. What are you what are your plans? Let's hear it. The Senate was about increasing access to capital through our small businesses and in particular through our community banks. Mm -hmm. So I've been responsible for billions of dollars more now going into our community banks because they're in the community and then they know who's in the community and who's where the, the talent the is and who's doing good mm -hmm. in the community, what the community wants. Mm -hmm. uh, and so part of my plan as president mm -hmm. is to give small businesses, startups, a tax deduction of $50,000 to start up. Because right now the tax deduction is $5,000. Can't do nothing with that. That's exactly right. Mm -mm. And, so and there's a reason why you can't do nothing with that. It is because Kamala Harris, Bidenomics, I'm going to say Kamalanomics, because she was definitely um, a big contributing factor with Joe Biden. Now that we're getting word that she had equal equal power, equal position to, you know, make decisions within the Biden administration. This is coming out the worst's mouth. Joe Biden is saying to himself, we can hold her accountable for, you know, the current position that we're finding ourselves in. So I'll say shame on her for trying to push us there to say 5,000 and left. You need 50,000 in this economy. It's because of you. Oh my goodness. Right now the tax deduction is $5,000. Can't do nothing with that. That's exactly right. Mm -mm. And see, the thing we know is that most of our small business, our entrepreneurs who want to start a small business got a great idea, have incredible work ethic, but you know, they weren't handed a bunch of money on a silver tray right. and they just need to get their foot in the door. So there is that. There is what I need to do and what we need to do around making housing and rent more affordable. Part of the problem there is we have a housing supply shortage. My plan includes giving tax incentives for home builders to build Three million more homes by the end of my first term to increase supply to bring down cost and to increase home ownership, a $25,000 down payment assistance to first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. Cause again, people just need to get their foot in the door. They'll grind after that. Right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. They'll grind after that's that. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And and we know home ownership, especially for the community, that's that's the fastest, most effective uh -oh. Uh -oh. and most sure ways to build intergenerational wealth. Mm -hmm. It's then when your child says, I want to go to an HBC or some other college, and you say, well, honey, you don't have to take out a, a, a student loan. I'm going to take some equity out of the house. Mm -hmm. Or your child says, I want to start up a small business and you can say, let me take some equity and help you. First, right? first, what is that business? Let me make sure it's not an open plan. Well, but you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. You, know, yeah, you, it, have, you have something to pull a from. Productive, right, you have something yeah. where it's about intergenerational wealth. Because yeah. see, here's how I feel about the economy and the economy I want to grow. We have, for over the last four years, reduced black unemployment to the lowest it has been in decades, okay? Yep. That is an accomplishment. Yep. However, we, I believe, need to measure our success, not just only about everybody's working, but can you build wealth? Mm -hmm. Can you start? Right. And you can't do that underneath your administration. I'm going to end it there, guys. Kamala Harris, you know, she can go on and on and on about a whole lot of nothing. As you can see, this was the All the Smoke uh, podcast. Definitely go check it out if you guys want to see the full thing. But I will just say the same exact thing. You know, you can see on... Uh, I'm not really sure um, this gentleman's name on the left, but his face says it all. He's about tired of hearing it, too. And this is almost he could be the face um, for the American people where they're just, you know, absolutely fed up. You know, tired of the lies, the gaslight, and trying to paint that picture to say, I can do this. I can do that. Day one, I'll do this. Um, and I'm going to run this opportunity economy. She's campaigning and running on a new way for when she's still in Joe Biden's campaign policy. It, it just doesn't make sense to me um, how people are able to still support that. Um, I will say most folks, the majority are just like we see right here. This gentleman on the left where they're just fed up. Um, but there are some people out there that still want to say that Kamala Harris is going to be the first black woman president. And I just hope I can somehow, you know, get through to some of these folks, wake them up by you know, putting out content just like this. Where we're seeing that, you know, she is ducking and dodging even when she's with friendly or hostile. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, if you're media, she is dodging it almost every single time she's failing to hit on, you know, the subjects, her policy, her plans. And when she does, 
we get very roundabout or vague concepts of how she could potentially benefit American citizens. Guys, definitely hop in the comment section and let me know your thoughts, what you're making of it all. Uh, also, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy more content like this, catch you guys on the next one. We got